What's up, everybody? It's your favorite builder's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the print formers for Max. If you guys remember, he was kind enough to send me the Scorponok. I certainly didn't expect him to send me anything else. He certainly doesn't have to, and I've made him very much aware of that, but he decided to, and I do appreciate it. I will tell you, I don't have the box anymore. It was in the first impressions that I did on Patreon, but the box he sent this in, he sent this from Poland. It took a beating. It looked like the thing that Jim Carrey was kicking down the hallway in Ace Ventura. Like, it was in rough shape but everything seems to be okay, which is nice. He sent me three versions of this. We're only going to look at one, but I do have to give you some information in regard to what he sent me. He said it's based on the Marvel comic. In Poland, they had some Marvel stories, but they were issued in a strange pattern, and a lot of them were missing. Scorponok and Maximus were often present in the stories, and from what he remembers, Maximus did not really have an alt mode. The only instance he remembers was when he was floating on the ocean in one frame in his spaceship kind of mode. This figure version of the character reflects that image. If you remember, the Scorponok was based on the Marvel comics as well, so it's staying consistent to what he's kind of trying to do. He says he's made two color versions, one resembling the colors he had in the comics, including a more desaturated red and off-white resembling old paper that was used in the comics, which is a smart and clever move. He also had a violet head with red eyes. The second version is more based on the other interpretation, including a silver head with blue eyes and more saturated colors. The heads can be swapped if you prefer the mix. He also said that he has reused fists from his Rotostorm project for the hands because he hates designing hands. I hate drawing them, so I understand his plight. He sent this Legends test shot with that he's working on, which is interesting to see. We'll look at it a little bit. And he's also working on a Titan scaled, upscaled version of this. The shoulder container can be opened to store some small items, etc, etc. And with that, I think we can get started. You know where we have to start. Accessories. So he comes with two rifles. They're sculpted well enough. They're actually well done. A lot of these little like ridges and little indentations and stuff, I, I dig all that. It's just something that makes it more interesting. None of this stuff is painted. He's all used different color plastics to break up because his goal is that he would offer the files and you would kind of print them off at home and then you would paint them yourself. So for the concept of what this is, it makes sense. So I can't ding him for that because... The idea is that it's like a hobby thing more so than a figure thing, which is cool. He will hold those. They're a tight fit. I'm not sure if that's because the hands have been repurposed, but it is a bit of a tight fit. It will go, though, with enough pressure. They can also be stored on his back by using this notch and pegging it into this slot, and then he can have it over his shoulder, which is a cool look both in the back and from the front. It'll also slide in here in base mode. He's provided an extra set of eyes for each so that you can arrange the eyes as you see fit. I'm sure as a Transformers fan, he understands that fans can be very particular in how they like the little details, whether they want it to be true to the comic or the cartoon, etc., etc. And since he's tried to satisfy both, he's provided that option. He's also included two extra chess pieces, one with the Autobot symbol on it. I'm sure there's a sliding scale as to how well they're going to print depending on his printer, the materials, the settings, etc. stuff I don't know anything about. And an extra flat for the front of his kind of shoulder piece, I guess just in case anything were to break on that, he's provided an extra one of those as well. He's also provided two extra scopes. I'm guessing in case anything breaks, but there might be some other ways to incorporate them as well. These are the scopes for the rifles that we showed in the beginning, just as a FYI. And lastly, he even included a Marvel Comics uh, Transformer issue that I'm guessing has, there he is, has Fort Max in it, where it has the more purple head and so on and so forth. I, I, I'm not sure if he did this to kind of prove that his color palette was right, but I, I would have trusted him. So he's included this, which is his prototype for the Legends class figure. Um, I'm not going to mess with it too much because I kind of value this stuff a lot and I don't want any problems like what may have been caused right there. Uh, this is just one he's working on and apparently he's working on a Titan class one as well. But this actually, uh, I like, you know, I think that he could, you know, I, I mean, I hate to get in the guy's pockets, you know, it's not really my, my objective, but he could probably make some money with this thing because the legend stuff is kind of taking off and this is really well done in that regard. So I hope that he can get this off the ground. He probably could find a, a real, a real decent market for this if he can offer it in a kind of an affordable and appropriate price. So we're going to look at him and the one, the main one that we're going to look at here is the, is the tune colored one because the comic one is the one I want to keep in the best shape because it'll match the Scorponok that he gifted me. We are going to show a couple elements of the comic one because they are slightly different. One is more advanced than the other. But we don't need to look at all that right now. We just need to look at the basics. So the head sculpt is decent enough. Definitely looks like the, the comic book. I, I think it evokes that feeling. There's like a... um, I, like I, like I want to be... 
I want to be cautious in how I word this, but this head sculpt looks a little goofy, right? But like, that's kind of the charm because like the comic books look goofy, you know? And like, I dig that it kind of evokes that feeling for me. So it is on a swivel. So that's nice. And then we have the gray, it looks like three different, or at least two different variations of gray colored plastic. I can't tell if the, if the face is just ever so slightly lighter. It looks like it could be. And then the head will come off if you want to do like the headmaster gimmick or swap them. And it just sits right on that peg. Look at a round peg and a square hole mag. How do you feel about that? We have a waist swivel, which is quite nice and tolerance very well. And we have some shoulder articulation. Now on the standard, you kind of get up to here before it starts kind of bucking the system, right? So remember that, because we're gonna get back to that. And then we have a bicep swivel, and we have an elbow that is double hinged and gets you 90 degrees, but remember that as well. You have the different color plastic here, which is going to offer some color breakup. And if you remember, one of the things that I suggested in the last video was about outsourcing the joints. Well, he's done some tricks with the joints that we're gonna show off in a minute, but they're also tolerance a lot better on this one. Uh, wrist swivel, and that seems to be it for them. There is sculpted detail in the shoulders. There's sculpted detail along the forearms, obviously on all sides, even including like the little notches and stuff here. I, I noticed all that kind of stuff when it comes to, you know, this sort of thing, because, you know, that just means he took time with each little piece. And then you had these flaps here. This one's a little, a little loose and so is this one, but I haven't had any fear of them kind of snapping or anything. Alrighty, so we'll look at, uh, you know what, let's stop and show off the other elements. So on this one, it probably is the same on the other one, but you can lift up the shoulder pad a good bit and then adjust the arm and that'll get you 90 degrees out. It's probably the same on the other one. But then there's also the elbow where if you slide down, then you can get full range out of that double hinge, which is quite nice. Now we're getting ready to get into the hips and there's an extra bit of articulation here as well, where if you slide the hip down, kind of like what SH Figuarts does with their drop down joints, then you'll be able to get a wider range on the hip movement upward. So that's on this version as well. But uh, according to his paperwork, I'm not sure he's offering it on both styles. So I just checked this guy. He can literally do all those things too. I don't know why I got the impression that there were two different uh, styles that, you know, it's from his writing, but there's a bit of a language barrier. So maybe that has something to do with it. So let's, let's check the hips. So you'll be able to get not the full Van Dam, but a crazy range there. And for the drop down, you can get the leg more than 90 degrees up and let's see and the full Monty. So the full Monty's there and beyond. Full Van Damme's a little short, but you should be able to, I mean, you don't need the full Van Damme, right? You just, it's just something we say. You just need it to get out far enough. We have a thigh swivel, tons of sculpted detail, all in the chest, the abdomen area, the pelvis, and the thighs. So all of that is nice. We have a knee that's a little limited and may not have to be, um, but that's a little limited there and then we have the kind of this stuff sculpted down there including the the guns which is cool and then we have the ankles that are on ball peg so you'll get an ankle tilt down a slight one up and a pretty decent rocker given the how large he made the kind of opening socket so that all works fairly well as well and then there he is from the back you know and look like we judge this a little bit different right because this is like this is somebody's art like as a as an enthusiast this isn't somebody out there trying to make their living off of it, you know? So we judge this differently and we appreciate it differently. And it's it's always nice to see kind of fan-made stuff. It's kind of, it's kind of, you know, what I think is the heart and soul of third party. You know, when you take away the money grabs and you take away the hit you over the head with repaints and all that sort of stuff, at the heart of third party, what it is, is fan love for this stuff. And fan love for this stuff that we often feel is overlooked by the license holders. You know, I've had this conversation a thousand times and I don't mean to get off the rails here, but you know, the, the Takara and Hasbro could put it into third party anytime they want. They just 
just have to release the stuff that we want. You know, they don't. So that's why third party exists. You don't have this sort of problem in Star Wars and Marvel and DC because they have so much stuff. Well, you could have a 112 DC stuff. That's a different conversation. But they have all this stuff available for different levels of collectors. And, and, and not, not that I'm trying to get on any sort of soapbox in regards to this stuff, but just that this comes across here. This comes across as somebody who loves this stuff, wants to see stuff made from the comic, from the Marvel comic, that, that doesn't get a whole lot of love, and he's creating it. And he's creating it for himself and for the community, and I think that that's, that's pretty awesome. Size comparison-wise, there he is next to the Scorponot, so I think he fits in quite nicely. And if you need another point of reference, there he is next to a Masterpiece car-sized bot. So let's get him transformed. Rotate the arms 180 degrees and the head 90 degrees towards his right arm. The back side, take this piece down, rotate this piece 180 degrees, which will also allow you to rotate his upper torso 180 degrees. At that point, you can turn the entire torso at the waist swivel another 180 degrees. And finally, close the head inside. Now I apologize when I showed this figure from the back earlier, these two pieces are supposed to be slid down, which do, which does fill in the gap, so it looks even nicer. So now you want to go ahead and slide them up to where I had them when I showed you the back of the figure. Rotate the feet up 90 degrees, and then slide the feet in so that they meet against the gray piece. You can then lift up your cannons. I'll clean it up, we'll take a look at it. And look, here it is. And I mean, is it, you know, the most elegant transformation ever? No, but can you print it out from your home and do it yourself and then have something that also transforms? Yes, so I think there's that's where the charm is, right? Now he has some alternate things in here, like, you know, alternate base modes and stuff where you could swing the thighs down and kind of have, you know, these pieces up like that. And that stuff's all cool. You know, like base modes for me, you have to take the gun off, obviously. Base modes for me are kind of, you know, in aircraft carrier mode or whatever this thing is, like they're all kind of more suggestive anyway, you know? So like, you know, whatever you can think of is kind of uh, good enough. I mean, like, look, you know what I mean? You can do a little bit like this. It's just as long as you can make it seem somewhat purposeful, you know, it's kind of fine, right? You know, and I think it's well enough, you know what I mean? It's impressive just that he pulled it off more so in of itself, right? It's the whole is greater than the sum of its parts kind of thing. It's the fact that you wouldn't expect this to be able to do this that makes it special. So once again, we're not going to do negatives because it's not that type of review. We are going to do kind of constructive criticisms and, and suggestions, right? So he even said in the note that he did take in some into account some of the things that I had mentioned in the previous one, and I can tell that he did. There's more plastic color breakup, I feel like, in this one, which feels like less of a need for paint, especially if, you know, one is planning on printing this off at home. He did allow for more articulation. Now, he didn't do the external style hardware or joints that I had suggested maybe looking into, but he did look into affecting the build so that you could get more articulation. Like, look at how his left arm is curled up. You know, that's from him taking a little bit of extra time. Same with his legs. It just, it's starting to look more like an action figure. And all that means for him is that there's growth there, right? So, I feel like it would be my duty to give some other recommendations because obviously, hearing stuff like that is going to make you better. So, taking into account design things, right? Like, we have this, this flap here. Right, and then we have this piece of the thigh. And this flap eventually pr prevents this piece of the fly. I don't know why I stuttered there. I'm <laughs> a stuttering Stanley. Prevents this piece of the thigh from moving outwards any further. Now, if this piece was just cut here, it wouldn't be an issue, right? Or if this line was just a little bit smaller, it wouldn't be an issue. I think it'd probably be better to cut here because then this will save the sculpt when he's standing in a resting position. But little stuff like that is probably stuff that he's not taking into account necessarily from an action figure element because he's more into the design element, making sure that everything works, making sure that everything looks good and looks up to his standards, which is something I can definitely relate to. But after you get one built and put together, you can tell just this little change here would give you much more of an outward motion on these thighs and allow for a more extreme kind of situation there. And if I were him, I'd also start thinking about if he's going to do stuff like swapping out heads, right, where you can take this head and pop it off of the peg and put on another one. I think that's a smart idea, but then you might as well go the extra distance and do hands too. Now, I know he hates doing hands and so do I, so I'm not mad at him, but it would allow the consumer the options for display purposes to swap, you know, pointing hands or gesturing hands or something along those lines 
lines and they would still, the engineering wouldn't be affected because you could just swivel them on a peg. So stuff like that, I think might be all stuff to look into for him going forward. But I'm anxious to see if he does make any improvements because the improvements that he's made between Scorponok and this are substantial. Let me go ahead and collapse that just to make it look aesthetically better. And since I have the option to, let's do it. You can tell how much care went into the sculpt of this. You can tell how passionate he is about the Marvel comics, which I know a lot of people are, but they don't get a lot of love because the designs aren't the most graceful or elegant. And I know this isn't his intention and I'm not trying to imply that it is, but because those drawings do seem old and they're printed on the old paper, there is something about handling one of these things, which is which is kind of rudimentary, right? Like by retail standards, it's awesome by 3D hobby standards, but there's almost something about this that feels like it was in a time machine, you know, like that this stuff existed somewhere, someplace at some point and you never knew about it and now he's providing it to you. I wish this guy the absolute best because if I respond to nothing else, I respond to passion and the passion comes through in this. It comes through in every engineering aspect. It even comes through in the way that he does the instructions, which like just to give you an idea, like, he shows each piece, what it looks like before, what it looks like after, and he shows it what it looks like from all and from front and back angles, just to make it that much easier. Like the dude cares and he's a fan and I love that. I appreciate it. I appreciate him sending me this. He doesn't have to do that. And I'm anxious to see what he has in the future. So all of his contact information will be in the, the description below. If you want to get in contact with him or inquire about some things or whatever the case may be, please do so. And as 3D printing technology improves, I'm sure so will his pieces and as as he creates more and more designs, I'm sure the designs will improve as well as this one has. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.